Hi, welcome to Distinti's New Wave Theory Model. Uh, we're going to discuss the Helmholtz Equation. This course is actually for bachelor degree in science or physics or engineering. Okay, from previous lecture we determined that we need a wave model that accounts for the various flows. And we're going to review those first, but for the moment, uh, and then we're going to look at the Helmholtz Wave Equation, which I've written down here. This is its compact form. Uh, and we're going to get into this later. We're going to review. This is just here for reference. This, this is not part of this. It's just a cut and paste left. Forgot to delete this part. But this is the Helmholtz wave equation here. It looks complicated. We're going to show you it's really, it's really not that bad. So what are the primary motion and the complementary flow? The primary motion in this video course is to label the main motion of either a transverse or longitudinal wave. For example, if we have a transverse wave, the primary motion is transverse to the direction of motion. The complementary motion uh, would be the one that complements that. That would be a motion of the material um, that's complementary to the primary motion. So that these two motions together are the reason why the cork or the confetti that's sitting on the surface of the water waves actually goes in an elliptical or even circular path as the water wave progresses. There's no net motion of the medium, but there is, just as there's there's transverse vibration of the medium, there's also longitudinal vibration of the medium. And that longitudinal in a transverse wave is what I call the complementary motion. And then you have divergent flows, which is the cause of diffraction. So in other words, you have this little wave front here. And this little wave front isn't going to travel to here and just be itself. It's going to actually spread out. And therefore, this energy isn't going to stay in this little packet. It's actually going to flow. It's, it's going to diverge. It's going to, instead of going straight, it's going to diverge and spread out. And that's the reason why these, these energy in these rings get smaller and smaller uh, per unit length as the ring ex these rings expand. And this is the cause of diffraction. It's also the cause of R-squared losses, which we discussed in the earlier videos. And we need divergence of the medium to explain that. So let's put all the motions down just so we can keep an accounting of what we have. All right, we have the primary motion, which let's say is water waves in the vertical. This is the direction of propagation. We have the complementary motion, or complementary flow, and then we have the divergent flow. And therefore, any true wave phenomenon, and I'm going to show you this works for any wave phenomenon, you need to explain vibration and, and vibrations in all dimensions, all dimensions and divergence in at least two dimensions, one dimension or two, depending on what kind of wave you have. So let's look at the Helmholtz wave equation. All right, we're just going to look at, this is, the, this is the direction, the x direction we're going to talk about. So we're going to ignore the properties going off in the y and the z, and we're just going to discuss this as we propagate in the x direction. And so that's all we're showing here. It's the important part we're going to be discussing here. And u is the amplitude of the wave off of the mean sea level. So du dt is the acceleration, the acceleration of a particle on the surface of the water. And this d squared u dx squared is the curvature of the water. Here, where the curvature is flat, there is no acceleration of the water. Here, where the curvature is the max, you have acceleration of the water downward. Here, where the curvature of the water, you have acceleration of the water upward. So this very, very simple model only, only, only considers the motion, the primary motion. It does not consider complementary motion. It does not consider divergent flow either. And that's what the problem of this equation. It is a very simplified model. And it doesn't account for waves breaking, it doesn't consider any losses, it doesn't consider divergent flows, and it doesn't consider complementary flows. This is just like the, the Euler model. It just is a simple mimic of observed phenomena. It does not really explain the wave well. And because, and these are the violations of the rules of acquisition that I've seen, and Whenever we're in violation of the rules of acquisition, that tells us we have a lot more work to do. I'm not going to read these to you. You can read those on your own. And so what we have is, um, if you go and look on Wikipedia now, they're not going to tell you anywhere in the Wikipedia article that the 
Helmholtz wave equation is an approximation. It's being touted as being an absolute, irrefutable, total wave model of all waves to be known. My friends, it's just a simple approximation. The derivation I went through in college basically said it's only for very, very small waves. It's, not, it's just an approximation. But you won't find that. And they don't teach that anymore because this stuff is highly used in quantum mechanics and yada, yada, yada. And maybe that's the problem. We're running into problems with all that stuff. We haven't gotten anywhere with it because we're using overly simplified approximations that do not account for the true behavior of waves in nature. And so we so simplified it, but we forgot to tell people it's just a simplification. Now, with that said, that this is finite element modeling. Engineers and scientists have developed very accurate finite element models to study mechanical wave action for many different fields like beach erosion, for tsunami modeling, yada, yada, yada. But this development has not been fed back into quantum mechanics, electrical engineering, relativity, because these fields believe that the Helmholtz wave model is sufficient for all their needs and purposes. And for electrical engineering, I would say the Helmholtz wave model for most of the stuff that electrical engineers do is perfectly fine. All right, so conclusion. Uh, an actual wave phenomenon are more complex and can be accounted for by the simple approximation used through sophis throughout physics and engineering except possibly for the finite element models. So our next job is to develop our own finite element wave models which mimic all the observed wave motions and the divergent flows and then we're going to feed this back into the ether models and the light models to see, to see what we can get. Thank you very very much and if you could donate I appreciate it. If this helps you out um, you can go to my website. Since got, I have a, a donate button for uh, PayPal um, sorry, my website's woefully out of date. I've been trying to get to, to work on it, but I'd rather get these videos done. Thank you very much.